In this video I'm going to show you how you go about getting your data um, up onto FME Cloud or FME Server to use in translations. So the first thing um, you're going to have obviously is your workspace like this uh, and we're talking really about file based data sets here so here I've got a GML file and you want to take this translation that runs locally on your desktop and publish it up to FME Server um, it could be running locally or on FME Cloud and you want to run the workspace up there. So in the first scenario we're going to talk about where um, the workspace just runs. The end user using FME Server doesn't have any input as to, you know, he can't provide the input for the data transformation. He's just going to run the, the data transformation and get some results. So how do we first do that and make sure that the user can't upload any data? Well, The first thing you need to do is remove this, um, unlink this source data set. If this source data set is published, it means the user can set the source data set in the web browser. So um, we're just going <coughs> to, well, we can unlink from user parameter and then we can, well, we can save that if we want, but let's publish it up to the FME server. <coughs> so I'm using an FME cloud machine here, but it could be a local FME server as well. It's exactly the same workflow. Okay, so on this screen, what we can we do is you know name the workspace. But the other thing we know is the resources here. So we click on this. These are the resources that you want to upload to the FME server. So you know this this is only has one in the GML file. But if you had six readers in here, you'd have six different sources here. So I'm going to click Edit, um, and we're, what we're going to do to start with is just upload to repository. So what this does is it's kind of a private repository just for this workspace where you're going to put the data. You can't browse that data in the web browser um, and no other workspace can access it. It's just for this workspace. So if you upload another workspace that uses this city grid, uh, city grid data set, you're going to have to re-upload the workspace here. You won't be able to access it from that other workspace. So that's okay for this scenario. Um, I want to keep this local for this workspace. Replace that up there uh, and publish that up to FME Server. And you can see here in the log the, f the files are uploaded to the FME Server. Okay, so if I go back, if I go to my FME Server now and take a look, click on sample, actually I put it in this FEMA one, data upload to. So we can come in here and configure, and you can see the user can't choose um, what data set they use. Um, you know, there's no way for them to do that. So if I click run, it's just going to use that data set that I uploaded as the as the author and it should work absolutely fine. Okay, so let's talk about the next scenario. Let's say you do want to you still don't want to allow the user to provide any data kind of as input for the transformation. You want to be in control of that, but you want to have one data set and allow all workspaces to access that one data set. You don't want to have to keep uploading it. So how do we do that? File published to FME server. It's exactly the same workflow. This time we click resources there and we come here and edit. And we upload as a shared resource. So it's exactly what it says. What it's essentially a shared file a folder structure on the server. So you can come here and browse that folder structure on the server and you can say where you want the data. So I'm just going to put it in the root data folder. Click OK. Click OK. Continue. Paste the old workspace. I'm going to publish that up to the server. OK, so now when we come to this resources folder here, and look under data, we see these two files, city grid GML, city grid XSD. So any workspace on here with the right permissions can access these files, which is great. So I'm going to come in here, I go in FEMA, data upload to, and this is just going to run exactly the same. This time it's going to use these files on the central mount point. So now let's say we want to upload another workspace, file, publish to server. Um, but we want to. We don't want to re-upload the data again. You know, this is maybe upload three. Maybe I'm another user. 
Uh, I just want to use the file that someone's already put up there. It was, let's say it's a terabyte file. I don't want to, or a gigabyte even. I don't want to, you know, have to go through um, re-uploading it all. So here I can actually come into the resources panel, and this time instead of uploading a shared resource, I can just use an existing one. Um, and so here, City Grid GML. Click OK. Click OK. Data upload three this time. Publish up to the server. Again, look, this time no data's been pushed. Um, it's just uploaded the um, the workspace because it's using the data that's already there. But I should be able to come into data upload 3, configure that and run that, and it'll be using the, um, the file that's in the resources. So one other thing to note, uh, you can come in here and upload data in here. So you can create a new folder. Um, you know, I don't know, version 2 let's say, and you can upload actually files directly in here. Um, the other cool thing you can actually upload is you can upload whole folders, um, choose a folder and you can actually upload whole folders um, and pump the data up there that way. Um, so that's a, a good way for doing file geodatabases, oh look I just did a whole shape file there. Okay, so let's talk about another scenario. What happens if you want to allow the user to basically um, provide a, a data format, a data file as input for a translation? Well, that's very easy. Um, all you have to do is create a user parameter out of the source. And now when you publish up to FME server, you can provide the default data set using resources in any way you want. So. You know, you can use the existing shared resource as default. So if the if the customer doesn't provide any input or the user doesn't provide any input, then it will still run. Um, but what this essentially does by publishing this source data set is <coughs> it allows you to go in here in repositories data load three. And now you see you have this dialog. So what you can do is you can allow the user to choose the file. This is a central mount point. Um, sorry, the uh, resources folder. So you can choose the file from in here if you want. Um, GML. So this might be good if you you know you you have a few different different files and you're letting the user internally choose which one you want to run the translation against. Crucially, though, they can upload their own file. Um, so, you know, this is important. Here, they, you add files at the top here. You can let them select multiple files, click open, um, you know, add them add them in the web browser in real time, and then they can choose which file they want to run the workspace. So, that's good if you want to provide the, the, the end user to have the ability to, to choose the source data set. The only other thing I want to talk about is FME Cloud. So the final solution for FME Cloud is, um, and this might be applicable to you if you have your own data set as well, but we have a PostGIS data set up on FME Cloud. So what you can actually do um, is pump data up to the PostGIS database and then just use that locally, use the database locally. So what do we do for that? Um, well, let's switch this file to your database API out for PostGIS. Um, PostGIS. And you might say, okay, well, what, what are my credentials? Well, to find that out, you simply go to your FME Cloud um, login. You click on the instance you're running. So I have a starter one running here. Click on connect. And here you can get the copy of the instance host, which you need, obviously. What host is the instance running on? Uh, I can, you can have a look at the connection documentation here. But essentially, all you need to do is, is paste the host name in. And then where do you get these from? Well, when you downloaded the stat, the um, credentials file, you, you got something that looked like this. And this contains all of the information you need um, to connect to the database, DB user, and here's the password as well. And and this way, you know, that's you're now you connected to that PostGIS database and you can now pump data up to that database for the workspaces to use when they're up there very very easily. Um, so they're the ways to get data up onto an FME Cloud FME server instance. Thanks for watching.